In this video, I'm going to extend the whole Selenium model to capture seasonality in it. The method that I discussed previously was suitable for a time series with trend only. Here I'm going to discuss a method which is suitable for data with both trend and seasonality in it. Winters extended the holes method to capture seasonality in it. And there are two variations in this method based on whether the nature of the seasonal component is additive or it is multiplicative. So let's talk about the additive model first. So in the additive model, this is our forecasting equation. And this forecasting equation depends on three factors. First, it depends on the level of the series. And then it depends on the trend in the series, BT. And now our third component in this forecasting will be seasonality in the data set shown by ST. And then H is our forecast horizon and M is the frequency of uh, the data. And if M is equal to 4, then our data is quarterly. For the monthly data set, we use M equals 12. So these are the three components. Now we need three equations to estimate these three components. So our first equation is the level equation and here we are including uh, the seasonally adjusted component and the non-seasonal component and our smoothing parameter alpha will determine how much weight we want to assign to the seasonally adjusted series or the non-seasonal component of the series. If alpha is uh, closer to 1 we'll be assigning more weight to the seasonally adjusted uh, component and less weight to non-seasonal component. On the other hand, if alpha is closer to zero, we'll be assigning more weight to non-seasonal component. And then our second equation is uh, the trend equation and we'll be controlling for uh, the smoothness of uh, this equation using a beta star which will control the smoothing parameter for the trend. This component is the change in level and this component is our past trend. So now we want to assign either more weight to the changing level or to the past trend. If beta star is closer to 1, we'll be assigning more weight to the changing level rather than to the past trend. On the other hand, if beta star is closer to 0, we'll be assigning more weight to past slope rather than the changing level. Now we are introducing our third equation which is the seasonal equation and uh, here we'll be working either with the current seasonal component so this is the current seasonal component and this is our past seasonal component. Now we have to decide how much weight we want to assign to the current seasonal component and how much weight we want to assign to the past seasonal component and this will be controlled by gamma. Now this will be our smoothing parameter for seasonality. If uh, gamma is um, closer to 1, we'll be assigning more weight to the current seasonal component and less weight to the past seasonal component. And if gamma is closer to 0, then we'll be assigning more weight to past seasonal component. This way you can apply the Holtz Winters seasonal method to forecast a time series. And here you forecast based on uh, three components, the level component, the trend component and the uh, seasonality. And again, each equation depends on a smoothing parameter. It either depends on alpha, beta or gamma. And these three parameters control for how much weight you want to assign to various components in these equations. So similar to the additive model, you can easily use uh, the multiplicative model and again, we'll be working with the forecasting equation based on uh, three equations, the level equation, the trend equation and seasonality equation. And in this case, all the components will be entered in uh, the multiplicative form rather than the additive form. For example, this is the seasonally adjusted component uh, that we talked about earlier. And uh, here it is entering uh, in the multiplicative form. And similarly, this is the current seasonal component 
which is entering in the multiplicative form. So that is the main difference between uh, the additive model and uh, the multiplicative model. The multiplicative model is preferable when the seasonal component is proportioned to the level of uh, the series. And then again, we can introduce uh, the damped method as well. That is, if we believe that we may be over forecasting for the long forecasting horizon, we can control for uh, phi, which will control for uh, the damp in the series. So we can either damp it a lot or we can damp it a little bit. So this was uh, the seasonal method and you can apply this method either in the additive form or in the multiplicative form. And uh, you can add a damping parameter to both additive form and uh, the multiplicative form to control for uh, uh, the dampening of uh, the series over the long uh, forecasting horizon. And uh, essentially our goal here will be to estimate uh, alpha, beta and gamma and essentially you can either start with the trial and error by picking up various values and then looking at uh, how your model is performing or you can minimize the sum of squared residuals to estimate uh, the values of uh, these parameters and find the values of uh, these uh, six uh, unknowns uh, that will minimize uh, the sum of square residual. All right, so that is uh, the whole winter seasonal method which allows the inclusion of uh, seasonality in our forecast. In the next video, I'm going to show you example of uh, the whole winter's uh, seasonal method in R. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.